one of the basic principles of the Dharma is that when concentration is nurtured with virtue, it has great fruit and great benefit, gives rise to discernment, discernment that you can trust. So how does virtue lead to discernment? When you're following the precepts, you have to be very clear about what your motivation is, your reasons for doing things. Only then can you know whether you've broken a precept or not. If you're thinking about a person who acts and then has to think afterwards, well, what was my motivation for that? It's going to be hard to observe the precepts, and it's going to be hard to gain any discernment, because you want to know the mind's reasons. Because that's what discernment is all about, is figure out the mind's reasons for why it would go for greed, why it would go for anger, why it would go for delusion, why it would go for any of the, the hindrances. These defilements have their reasons, you know. Sometimes they seem to seem <clears throat> use nothing but brute force, but that's not the case. They have their reasons. They may be pretty poor, which is why they have to use brute force sometimes. If you're going to get past them, you have to know their reasons. What's the allure of those things? And have good reasons to counteract them. And know how to make your reasons stick. In other words, how to convince the mind that it really is in its best interest not to follow those disfilements. So look for the reasons, both as you act, as you go through the day, and when you're sitting and meditating and suddenly find the mind wandering off. So why does it want to go there? What does it feel that it's going to gain? Sometimes it says, well, I've been good for a while, can I have a little free time? But if your free time is going to destroy the goodness you've been developing, why? regard it as free time. As John Lee once said, our problem is that we follow the Eightfold Path in its right version sometimes, and then the wrong version. We go back and forth, back and forth, and the path doesn't go anywhere. You want to be able to stick with the right path all the way through, which means that you have good reasons for doing that. So you have to learn how to psych yourself out. What are your reasons for liking sensual desire or liking ill will? Ill will can dress itself up really well. Justified anger. Someone has misbehaved and you say, well, they really should be punished. And if they're not punished fast enough, you get upset. That's ill will. Ideally, if someone's misbehaving, you want them to see the error of their ways and have a change of heart. Punishment doesn't necessarily change people's hearts. Hell beings come out of hell and they're still convinced that they were put there wrongly. So watch out for the mind's reasons. Be very careful about when you act, when you speak, what your reasons are for acting and speaking in that way. Act only on the best possible reasons you can imagine. And then watch the mind as you're meditating and see what reasons it has for going off. You'll learn a lot. And as you develop more skill in counteracting the reasons of the defilements, your discernment grows stronger. So as we're following the precepts, remember this is good practice for discernment. We're trying to be reasonable in our thoughts and our words, so that ultimately we can be reasonable in our actions and words, so that we can be more reasonable in our thoughts, in the movements of the mind, so that really do lead to long-term welfare and happiness.